Hey everyone, it's me, Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. Welcome to Everything is on its way to somewhere. This is a Zen Tangle inspired class for the San Rafael Public Library, but I thought I would go ahead and record it and share it with you. So let's go ahead and talk about the things that we're going to need for class. I'm going to be working with the Micron PN pen an identa pen for pooling ink later on. This is a thick nib pen that helps to make a little bit quicker business of pooling ink. But if you have a Sharpie, that will do in a pinch. I really love the identa pen because it's double sided. It has a fine point and a thick point. I'm going to be working with the Jelly Roll 10 to do some highlights inside of that Dragonfly. This is a white gel pen, but if you've got a paint pen like a Posca, you can use that as well. I'm going to be working with a graphite pencil in order to create the string for this class. So have a regular number two pencil that'll work just fine. You know me, I'm a Prismacolor girl. So grab your Prismacolor pencils. We're going to have a lot of fun with these. And hey, if you don't have Prismacolor pencils, don't worry about it. Just grab the ones that you have and work alongside with us. And then later on down the line, you'll end up buying yourself some really nice pencils. Now many of you know that I like working with the Genesis tile from the Tangled Yogi Shop. This is a tile that's four and a half by four and a half inches, super smooth and really receives color pencil quite well. If you don't have the Genesis tile, don't worry about that either. Go ahead and just make a square on your sketchbook that's four and a half by four and a half inches and play along with us. We're going to have a lot of fun with this class. So let's get started with everything is on its way to somewhere. Many of you know that I like to do a little bit of a centering exercise before we get started creating and hopefully you have all your materials ready to go. Just put them off to the side for a minute and let's get centered. So taking a comfortable seated position here and letting your hands rest in your lap or wherever it feels comfortable. Let your shoulders melt away from your ears. Allow your spine to grow comfortably tall here. And when you feel ready, you can allow your eyes to close if you're comfortable with that. Letting your attention come to your breath here. And just notice the breath as you're breathing in. And as you're exhaling out. As you breathe in, notice how your body expands with breath. And as you breathe out, notice how the body releases and relaxes. Staying with your breath on the inhalation. And staying with your breath on the exhalation. One more time, full body breath here. Breathing into your belly, your rib cage, and your upper chest and then letting it go with a sigh. And just staying with your breath for the next few moments. I'm going to share a quote here. And this was the inspiration for this class. And the quote is from Bob Goff and he says, Embrace uncertainty. Some of the most beautiful chapters in our lives won't have a title until much later. And as I was creating this class, I didn't really know where it was going, and I just kind of let it unfurl. And so I hope that you will be willing to go along for the ride with me on this one. Taking in another deep breath right here. Let it go with a sigh. And in your own timing, wiggling in your fingertips and wiggling in your toes, and gently blinking your eyes open to add vision into your practice. And let's get ready to create. Okay, so let's start out the regular old-fashioned Zen Tangle way by putting our dots in our corners here. We're going to start to build a frame around the piece. And all I'm going to do is connect my dots or take a dot for a walk.
and just getting this to create a beautiful frame around our piece here. Now once I've got that frame around the piece, I'm going to go up to the top and find the middle here, and I'm going to divide the space in half. And then I'll go ahead and I'll do it again, dividing the space in half, just like so. Okay, so you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine, and then when we come back, we're going to build out the string just a little bit more. So to build out the string for our composition today, we're going to be working with a really fun tangle called Well. And I'm going to show you Well in its fragmented form, and then we're going to put it into the composition to build our string. And remember, for those of you who are new to Zentangle, a string is just the way that you divide the space in which to tangle in. So I'm just going to start by putting a circle in the center. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the left hand corner here and I'm going to make an arc that's going to land on the right side of that circle. I'm going to turn my tile clockwise here and you can see that I'm just going to go to the next corner which is still the left hand corner and going to the right side of the circle. Turning the tile, going to that left hand corner and landing on the right side of the circle and then once again turning my tile right here going into this corner so that now all four corners are now connected to the center here. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring this into our piece to create a string. So let's start to bring well into the composition here. I'm going to come into this upper left hand corner in here and I'm going to start by making a little circle in the center. Now remember how we just did the demo? You can see that I still have my graphite in my hand here, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and land on the right hand side of that circle. I'm going to turn the tile clockwise here, come to the left hand corner, and land on the right hand side. Turning the tile, come to the left hand corner, land on the right side of the circle here. One more time, coming to the left hand corner and creating your well. So there's our first well. We'll be coming back to it and adding a lot more detail in a minute, but let's go ahead and do the next one down here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start by building a circle in the center here. And once again, I'm going to start from the left hand corner and land on the right side of that circle. Nice arc and land. Turn your tile clockwise here, come to the left hand corner, land on the right side of the circle. Turn your tile, come to the left hand corner, land on the right side of that circle. Last time right here, come to the left hand corner and land on the right side of that tile. So that now when we come back up, we have two wells that are going in the same direction. Now we're going to flip it around and we're going to start to build the piece. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start to work in these two corners right here. So I'm just going to start by coming in, making a circle, and this time we're going to go from the opposite direction. Now I know sometimes that this can be a real brain bender, but for me, I actually like doing this other side first because the second side is actually easier. So for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come from the right hand corner here and I'm going to land on the inside edge and you'll see what I mean in a second. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to land on the right or on the left hand side. Now for me what I see is I see the number six or I see B as in boy. The other thing that you can do that's going to make this a lot easier is you're going to turn your tile counterclockwise and so all I'm going to do is come from the right hand corner to the left side of that circle. Turning my tile counterclockwise there and all I'm going to do is go from the right hand side to the left hand side of the circle. Once again, turning my tile, 
coming from the right-hand corner to the left-hand side of the circle. And you can already see that there's a beautiful meta tangle that's starting to show up here, which is so lovely. Let's go ahead and do the same thing in this corner right here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the top here, make a nice circle, and I'm going to start from the right-hand side and land on the left-hand side. Here we go. Turning my tile counterclockwise here, coming in right here and landing on the left-hand side of the circle. Turning your tile coming to the right-hand side and going to the left-hand side. One more time. Right-hand side to the left-hand side. So now we've come full circle here, literally, <laughs> and you should have something that looks a little bit like this. So take a moment and then when we come back we're going to add a little bit more to these wells. Once we've got well in there, we can go ahead and pick our pens up and start to trace over what we've started. So all I'm doing is going over the lines that I inked in. You can see that I'm just doing the tangle well and then coming around and doing the next one. I'm not using my division lines. I'm actually going to leave those alone. All I'm inking in is the tangle. Take your time with this. If there's lines that you'd like to clean up, you can clean up those lines. This is the opportunity to do that. And see I'm just turning the tile and making it work for me. This is also another opportunity to relearn the tangle so that your body can remember it. Coming in over here, last one, and remembering how we started the tangle, right? So coming in and working our way around. So go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to build a little bit more onto this piece. You can see the positioning of my tile. Hopefully yours is matching up in the same way as mine is. So I've got those outer points facing outward and the rounded edges on the side here. I've picked back up my graphite pencil. We're going to be adding in some more lines to our wells here. I'm in the upper left hand corner here and all I'm going to do is I'm going to start from this point and I'm going to come to where the midpoint is and just a little bit above it and make a little dot. All I'm going to do is make an arc and have it connect. Once I have that, I'm going to go over to the other side and line this up so that my dots are lining up and I'm going to go to the upper right hand corner and have it meet that dot. Once I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and come back to this line that we started with here, coming to the midpoint and just a little bit above it and I'm going to make an arc that's going to come down and connect to this corner. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Coming over to this side, find the midpoint, go a little bit above it, and all I'm doing is arcing and touching down. The final detail for the spirals in here is I'll come into this line right here, find the midpoint, go a little bit below it, make a dot, and come into the center there. Same thing on the opposite side and come into the center. Now once I've got those connected I'm going to start to work in this little space right in here. You can see that I've got this line right in here. I'm going to come to the midpoint and just stay at the midpoint. 
I'm going to go ahead and create an arced line that's going to come out. And I'm going to do the same thing here, finding the midpoint and stay at the midpoint. And make another line that comes out. Take a moment. I know that was a lot of information. <laughs> We're going to do the same thing all over again. Are you ready? Here we go. Let's flip the piece over and do it all over again. I'm starting with my points on the outside edge, your rounded edges happening over here. I'm going to be working on this line right here. Notice the direction that it's moving in. Coming to this line, find the midpoint and go up just a little bit and you're going to make an arced line that's going to connect to it. I'm going to come to this line right here, find the midpoint, go up. See, I can use this as a guide. Make my dot and then coming out from that corner and lining up. Once I've got that, I'm going to come right back into this line right here. Find the midpoint, go up just a little bit, arcing down and connecting. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Coming over to this line, find the midpoint, up a little bit, make your dot, and arcing down. Coming back to this line right over here. See where I'm at? Coming to the midpoint, and then just a little bit below it, and then make a line that's going to connect. Notice how that line has a nice arc to it. Same thing over here, find the midpoint and a little bit below, and then making a nice arc as you come into center. Once I have that, I'm going to start to work in this area right in here. See this line right here? Find the midpoint and make a dot. You're going to stay at the midpoint on this one. See how this has a soft arc to it? I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Find the midpoint, come from this point to this point with a nice soft arc. So once we've got that, we are ready to rock and roll and pick up our pens. So here we go. All I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to ink in the lines that are in the left hand one. taking my time. Then I'll go over to the right and do the ones on the right. I'm going to take the tile, flip it over, and we're going to do it all again. Going over to the opposite side. Just like so. So hopefully you have something that looks a little bit like this. All right, I'll see you in a minute. Go ahead and finish up yours. So for this particular class, we're actually going to add our special guests in first. And the reason for that is because it's going to fill in the space quite nicely, but also define the space too. So what I've done is I've picked up my pencil here, and we're going to start to build our dragonflies into the piece. You can see that the way that my piece is directioned, I've got those open spaces going in towards the center. You can see on this side the narrow spaces are in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this bottom one first, and you can see that I still have my string that's in there. I'm going to come in about, I'm going to say a quarter of an inch away from the top, and I'm going to make a small circle. Once I've made my small circle, I'm going to make a teardrop shape that's going to come up and meet it. Once I have that, 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a seed-like shape that's going to come down. I'm going to go over to the sides and start to build the wings of my dragonfly here just by creating seed-like shapes. So it'll look a little something like this where I'm going to bring my seed-like shapes outward and then I'll do some smaller seed-like shapes that connect to the first ones. So there's my first dragonfly there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip my piece and I'm going to do it again. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come away from the center just a touch, create that teardrop shape that's going to come up to meet it, seed-like shape that's coming down, connecting from where the head and the body are, I'm going to make the first seed shape for the wings, and then I'm going to do another set that connect to the first set. So it'll look a little something like that. So take your time putting those in and then when you feel ready picking up your pen and try to pick up a better pen. That pen is a little bit dry. I'm going to ink in the dragonfly and this is where you can change up any lines that you need to do a little bit differently. And then I'll flip the piece and do it again. So all I'm doing is Putting in the head, teardrop shape, seed shape, and then continuing with that seed shape for the wings, just a little bit larger. And then smaller seed shapes that connect out of the sides. Now if you need to pause me here, this is a great place to do it. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my IdentiPen here. These are great pens to do large puddling of ink. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and very, very gently start to bring in some black into the piece. And what this is going to do is it's going to take a piece that's really, really busy and start to make it feel grounded. You're going to see me turn my tile. Just really taking my time with this. You can see that I'm adding a little bit of an outline to the area of where that dragonfly is. Turning the tile. And just continuing to go around to the other side. making my way around. 
just like so. So that now, once I've got those in there, look at how that's defined the space. I really feel like that really gives us a lot of gravity. So you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. Now that I've got those two dragonflies in there, I'm going to take my identipen and I'm going to give a nod to the center just by filling in those circles with black ink. So you can see that I'm just going around and you want to be careful not to touch the areas where you're working. So if you're right-handed, you're going to turn counterclockwise. If you're um, left-handed, you're going to go clockwise. So you're just being really mindful of where you're putting your hand so that you're not going to touch the ink and make it smear or smudge. And then take a moment to let that area dry. And then when we come back, we're going to start in with another set of tangles. So we're going to be starting with our first tangle, and this is called Flux Blossom. And for many of you, the tangle Flux is pretty familiar. You can see that it's just a teardrop shape, just like so. Flux Blossom looks a little something like this, where you start with your teardrop shape, and then you have two others come on either side of it, and then you do an arc, and then you create another arc on the other side, and you can see how those connect and then you can do a really nice stem that comes off of the bottom of it. So that is Flex Blossom and I just thought it was perfect for this particular tangle. So let's go ahead and bring it into our composition. I've got my dragonflies facing in towards one another here. We're going to be working in these two sections right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by coming into this piece right in here and I'm going to make a very nice narrow aura coming in on each side. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just like so. Now to build our flux blossom, I'm going to come to the midpoint here and I'm just going to start by making a little dot. I'm going to make that teardrop like shape, one on each side. I'm going to do an arc and then I'm going to do some scalloping over the top. So one, two, and here comes number three. Once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a nice line that comes down and connects. And then I'm going to do a really narrow aura on either side of it. Now if you want to, you can give a little leaf-like shape on either side of the stem just to keep it interesting. Let's go ahead and do that on the other side. So I'm coming to the midpoint, make a dot, make a flux, one on each side, nice arc and scalloping on the top on both sides creating that nice stem and then once again if you want to make a leaf like shape you can so now that I've got that there I'm gonna flip the piece and do it again so I'm just going to go ahead and start to create those aura lines on the inside. Once I've got my aura lines in, you guessed it, I'm going to go ahead and start in with the blossom. little bit of the arc, scalloping over the top, create the stem, let it touch down towards center, leaves on the side if you want them. So you go ahead and finish yours on the other side, I'm going to finish up mine. We're going to bring in a couple more sets of these particular tangles in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on these two bottom pieces. Notice that my dragonflies are still in that horizontal position here. 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to aura in these areas right here. Do the same thing on the opposite side just so that I have it ready to go. And once again, coming in and let's go ahead and zoom in on it. Coming in around the midpoint here. Nice little flux shape. Capping it off. Scallop and then creating that stem. Now it might get a little bit more tricky to do a stem in here so if you just want to thicken the line you can. Depends on how you're doing with it. Same thing over here. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom out here and you're going to see me just turn my piece again and once again coming in making a nice narrow aura and then I'm going to do the other side working over to the side again, creating the base of the blossom, the arc, the petals, the stem, and a nice leaf-like shape. I'm going to go ahead and do that on the other side. You go ahead and do yours. So once again I'm going to come in and I'm going to start to work on these pieces. Notice that my dragonflies are still on the horizontal here and I'm just going to create another set of auras in here. I'm going to turn it on its side to make me have a little bit easier of a time auraing these. Once I've got those the way I want them, I'm going to actually go ahead and turn my piece. I always find it's easier to work from the bottom up on these. So once again, coming in right here, making my blossom in here, aura, scallop, nice long stem coming into the center, and then once again your leaf-like shape. Same thing over here. Lines coming in. Leaf-like shape. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So you're going to see me turn my piece create those nice auras on either side. Notice the positioning of where those dragonflies are. They are kind of the the guide here. They just kind of help you figure out where you need to be in your piece. And then once again coming in towards the center create the blossom stem coming in towards the center and a leaf-like shape. I'm going to go over and finish this one. You go ahead and do yours. So we're going to continue in this state of flux that we're in here and we're going to work in this little area right in here. So I'm going to come into this and start to bring in a nice aura into the piece. And once I have that, I'm going to bring a little line that's going to come down through the center. I'm going to use those same tangles flux and start to bring them up the side here. So you're going to see me using that teardrop shape coming through the center. And then I'm going to jump off the last one and reconnect. Jumping off the last one, reconnect. 
jumping off the last one, reconnect. And let's make this nice and large for you to see. And then you can see I'm getting these little kind of triangular shapes. I'm going to pull those in just like so. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Jumping off, coming back in. Jumping off, coming back in. And then once I have that, I can pull in my ink and you know that I love pulling in the ink because it always gives such a neat graphic feel. And then we're going to add a little bit of detailing just by adding a little bit of a line in each of those little flux. And if you want to add a dot, you can add a dot but I'm going to leave them a little bit simple this time. So I'm going to go over to the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. So all I'm doing is coming in, creating an aura, letting that line come down and divide the space in half here, and once again creating that flux-like shape that's just a teardrop shape jumping off the side and coming back in. Once I've got that one side, I can go ahead and pull the ink. And I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So once again, teardrop shape, jump off the side, come back in. Once I've got it, see where those little triangle uh, pieces are? Those are your interstices. Go ahead and pull the ink, and then once again pulling the ink so that when I zoom out you can see it's got a really nice feel to it. I'm going to add those lines into the piece. Over on the opposite side. Just like so. Isn't that so pretty? So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. I've got these two to do and then you go ahead and do yours. So we're going to continue with that same shape again, and I hope that you're enjoying playing with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the area that I have right in here, and I'm going to start to build outward with flux. So it's going to originate from the bottom, come up and touch the point, and come back down and create a narrow flux like so. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump off the side and then line back up, jump off the side and line back up. Same thing here, jumping off the side, let it come back in, and same thing over here. Once I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and pull my ink right on the edges. Just love the way that this looks. It's got such a, a folk art feel to it. And then I'm going to turn the piece and I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to go in right here and I'm just going to let that flux kind of rise up from the bottom and then come back down again, letting it fan out. This guy got a little bit thicker than the first one, but that's okay with me. Getting right in there. And so you can see it's really got this nice feel, really kind of 
got a cool folk feel to it. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back, we're going to do some gemstones in this piece. So here we are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to close up the outside edges here. So you can still see that I've got my string that's on the outside edge here. And it's going to start to make these cool triangle-like shapes that we're going to get to work in. So I'm just going to work my way around here. And then what I'm going to do, once I've got my frame all the way in there, is I'm going to start to create these really interesting auras. So let's start right in here, okay? I'm going to come in and I'm going to start to create an aura. I'm going to make some dots to do that so that I have a place to land. And you can see that I'm going to make this triangle-like shape that's going to come in here. Once I have that, I'm going to connect the corners to that shape. When we come in to shade this, it's going to be so cool. So I'm going to do that again. Coming in, making a dot for my triangles. And then I'm going to come in from the corners and connect just like so, so that you end up with a piece that looks something like that. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So one, two, and three. Make my triangles and connect to the corners and to the point. Same thing on the other side, right over here. One, two, and three. Let's zoom in on that so that you can really see it. Make your triangle and then connect to the corners. This is going to be super, super fun turning this over. coming over to the opposite side and doing the same thing. So you're getting the idea of where I'm going with this. Creating these smaller triangles inside of these kind of elongated triangles. And then I'll do one more right over here. so that we end up with all these gemstones working their way around the piece. This is going to be so much fun to add color to. All right, you go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to finish up mine. So if we were in the same room together, I'd be handing out chocolates right now. It's time for color, baby. Let's do this thing. So what I have in my hand is the color magenta, and this is PC930, one of my favorite colors in the Prismacolor set. Now remember, if you don't have the same color as me, don't worry about it. Just grab a really pretty wine color red. That's really what I'm looking for. So I'm going to focus in on well in this corner right here, and what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in, and we're going to start to work in this area in here. Now remember, whenever you have a color, you always have three colors, right? You have your light, you have your medium, and you have your dark. It's all about the amount of pressure you're putting on your color. So I have my pencil really well sharpened up, and we're going to be working on the side of the pencil at first. You can see that I'm holding the pencil really far back, and I'm just going to rub the side of the pencil into the page here. And the reason for that is because whenever you're working in a fairly big area where you're going to add color, working on the point of the pencil is going to take a lot longer than if you work on the side of the pencil. And you can see that I'm going nice and light with this and just getting a really nice soft color.
Now once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and choke up on the pencil a little bit and I'm going to start to work on the point and this time I'm using a medium pressure. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to start to add a shadow into this area as well. And then I'll come in and press a little bit harder here. You can see I'm starting to get the glow off of that pencil, which is really, really nice. Now I am going to pick up a little bit of white to do some blending here. And the reason for this is because I really want to get a softness behind what's happening with that red. So I've got a little bit of my white and this is the PC938 and you want to make sure that you're pretty well sharpened up because whenever you're doing blending you want to have a good point on your pencil. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in where that lighter color is meeting the lightest color and you're going to start to see me get a really soft blend out of this. And whenever I'm working with the, these wine colors I always love to use a little bit of white because it gives it a little bit of levity. Sometimes it can give this too much too much vibrancy in the color and I always like to have a little bit of white in these burgundy colors just to give them a little bit of levity. Now once I've got that I can come back in and I can press a little bit harder at the points to get a little bit of vibrancy out of it. You can see I'm going to come back up and I'm going to do the same thing up here, just give this a little bit of vibrancy. And you'll notice that as I move away from that edge, I'm lightening my touch on the pencil. And then I can come back in and do a little bit more blending in here. So I'm going to give you a lot of work here. I'm going to come in and I'm going to do all of my pieces that have the flower in it. So I'm going to come over here and do them and down here and do them. So this is really where you can get into the Zen of what you're doing. You know where you're going with this and all you have to do is just follow that blending instruction and use that one color. How great is that? So just relax, enjoy and have fun. Isn't that so much fun? You know, one of the things that I forgot to mention earlier was the fact that when you add color into a piece that is so, so busy, like this piece was a couple of minutes ago, it really starts to bring in so much gravity and I hope that you're noticing that too. So let's go ahead and start to bring in a little bit of greens into this piece here. So I'm going to let go of my reds just for now and I have in my hand PC1005. This is the lime peel green. I tend to use this one a lot. And then I also have in my hand the dark green which is PC908. Now you could use grass green in lieu of the, uh, the dark green. Uh, whatever you have lying around is just fine. So remember all I'm looking for is a light green and a dark green. So I'm going to come back into this corner that we have right here and I'm going to start to work with our really beautiful flux like shapes that we have. And I'm just going to go in with that lighter green and you can see that it's pretty well sharpened up and I'm going to start to rub the side of the pencil into the flux. So coming in and letting that roll right up the side of it. I'm going fairly lightly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up that darker green and I'm going to start to add a little bit to the bottom of each of these leaf-like shapes. And you can see that it's starting to bring a really nice highlight into the piece. And because this color is so dark, I don't have to press hard. 
Now I am going to come back in with a little bit of that light green again, that lime peel green, and I'm going to blur the edges of that darker green so that I don't get a hard line of demarcation. I want it to feel soft. So I'm going to go all the way around the piece and work in all of these little areas just like so. You go ahead and do yours. Remember to enjoy what you're doing. Even though it's repetition, you can let your mind just relax and be in the present moment. So you can already see that that contrast is bringing so much interest into the piece here. I'm going to go ahead and start to take some of that color that we have right here and I'm going to carry it into these pieces on the side. So let's go ahead and focus in on this one right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub the side of the pencil once again into the paper here and you can see the way I'm holding the pencil. It's not our traditional way. I'm back a little bit. And all I'm going to do is rub that pencil into the paper here. And you can see at the very, very tips of these leaf-like shapes, I'm going to let those stay light. Once I have that, I'm going to pick up the darker green just like so and start to bring in a shadow along the outside edge here. and over here as well. And you can see that I'm being mindful of these lines that we have out here, helping them to stay nice and light. Now, if you've had an oops opportunity, don't worry about it. Later on, we'll be bringing gold into those, so you don't have to worry too, too much, but it is nice to keep them lighter if you don't want to add the gold, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and start to blur those lines out a little bit. You can see that I'm getting this really nice kind of rich color in there. Look at how pretty that is. It really has a nice soft feel. I think I'm going to take this all the way out to the outer edge in there and just soften it as I go inward. And you can see that that really brings an interesting feel. So I'm going to take that same technique and bring it over to the other side. Now I may come in and just add a little bit of deepening of that color right in here. But otherwise I think that's how I'm going to leave it. So you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. So before we put our greens away, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring in that light color green right into the stems of my flowers. Now if you don't happen to have enough room for adding a little bit of light green into your stems, don't worry about it. But I am going to go ahead and just add a little bit of that light green in there and I'll also put it into the two little leaves that I have on either side of the flower. So you can see that I'm just kind of working my way around and adding that in. So you go ahead and do yours. I'll finish up mine. So let's let go of the greens for right now. We're going to start to move into the blues. I'm going to be working with, and check me out, you know me, I've got these small <laughs> pencils again. <laughs> Use them until they're done, right? PC992. This is the light aqua that I'm going to be working with. And I've also got the Copenhagen blue in my hand, which is PC906. I love these two together. They are one of my favorite combinations. Now, if you don't don't have these colors don't worry about it just grab a light blue and a dark blue and you're ready to go okay so let's talk about the outside edges we'll come back to the flowers in a minute so the outside edges is where we're going to start to bring in our blues and so I'm going to focus again on this corner and zoom in on it and the way that we're going to do our gemstones is we're going to start by taking a little bit of that light aqua and we're going to dust it into the corners here, leaving a little white right in the middle. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm 
and then I'll come over here and do the same thing as well. Now once I've got those gemstones kind of in there, I'm going to go ahead and pick up some of that Copenhagen blue. And on this one, I'm just barely going to touch the edge of the color here. I'm just tickling the page with my pencil. And I'm going to do the same thing over here, just barely touching the edge, because this is where a lot of the light is going to be. Now down here, I'm going to push a little bit harder because I want to get a little contrast out of this one. And I'll push a little bit harder over here. And then I'll come into this corner and press a little bit harder here, just like so. Now once I've got those in there, I'm going to go ahead and come back in with a little bit of that light aqua, and you're going to see me blur that line of demarcation again. Notice how I'm leaving the light in the center here. I'm going to come over here and blur that light. I'm going to come in here and soften this up a little bit and over here as well. And then once again, blurring the light right in here, getting a really nice softness. Look at how that stone just picks right up. It's so cool. And then finally, I'm going to work in the center here. I'm going to put down a little bit of that light aqua right over here. And then I'm going to come in really nice and heavy with that really pretty Copenhagen blue. And then I'll give this a soft dusting just to soften it up. And isn't that so pretty? So I'm going to do the same thing on each one of these little gemstones. So everything you just saw me do, I'm going to do it all over again. So go ahead, do your gemstones. This is going to be so pretty when we're done. I'm looking forward to seeing all of yours too. All right, have some fun with this and I'll see you in a few minutes. Well, I hope you're loving yours as much as I'm enjoying mine. This is so fun. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my blues again and I'm going to come into where our dragonflies are. So let's go ahead and zoom in on those dragonflies. And I'm going to start just by shading the head of the dragonfly with a little bit of that light aqua. So you're going to see me just come in and do a really soft shade on that dragonfly. And then I'll come in right where the wingspan is, and I'm going to go about three quarters of the way with that light aqua in the wings here. And down into these little guys right over here as well, leaving the tips of the uh, dragonfly a little bit lighter. Let's see if I can zoom in on that a little more. And then for the teardrop, I'll come up from the bottom and bring a really soft shading of that light aqua from the bottom. And then at the very, very bottom, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a little bit of shading where I leave the light source right in the center there. I'm going to pick up my darker blue and start to add a little bit of a shadow in each of these areas that we just worked in. Now you can see that I don't have to press hard with that darker blue. It just really grabs on, so that's really a plus for us. So I'm just going to go ahead and add those little shadows into the wings, coming up from the bottom and bringing in a little bit of darkness at the very point of that teardrop shape, and then a little bit right in here and right in here. Once I've got those in there, you guessed it, I'm going to come back in with a little bit of that lighter blue and I'm going to blur my lines. So you can see that I'm just blurring the lines there, getting right in there, softening it up. And look at how that totally changes that dragonfly. You can see that when I zoom out, look at the difference there. Now if you want to take a little bit of your white pencil, you want to make sure there's no other colors on it here, otherwise you'll get a little bit of a muddy uh, presentation. You can see that you can come in and add just a little bit of white and kind of blur out 
those areas a little bit more to get a softer blend if you're looking for a little bit of a softer blend in there and I really do love the way that the, that that looks so have some fun with the dragonflies and then when we come back we're gonna add a little bit into our flowers so I'm going to come in here with a new color. I am going to be using the blue again too, but we're going to introduce goldenrod into the piece here. Goldenrod is PC1034, and I like it because it kind of has a mustardy feel or almost like a gold feel when you look at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus in on our flowers here, and I'm going to zoom in on this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a little bit of goldenrod and dust it into these really pretty flux flowers that we have in here. So once I've got this with the gold on it, you know I'm going to give it a little bit of a press at the bottom to give it a little bit of definition. And if you wanted to use a darker brown, you could use a darker brown, but for this particular class I'm going to keep it um, relatively simple so I'm just adding a little bit of pressure to that pencil. I am going to come in and dust this with a little bit of blue right in the center just to have a nice correlation with my background and then I'll come in with just a little bit of that darker blue right on the side just to keep it interesting and so for me this is going to be really really beautiful when we get them all put together and have this just a really lovely feeling it, to me it looks like fabric um, so I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to go all the way around and do my flowers just like so so have fun with yours and then when we come back we're going to add a little bit of gold to this. I just love the way that that just takes those pretty flowers and just softens them a little bit. It's really, really fun. For this next part, if you want to pick up your Jelly Roll Gold Pen, you can for that. I did that in my first iteration of this and really enjoyed it. But I really want to play with the goldenrod pencil that we have here. And so I'm going to zoom in on this corner right here and do this with the goldenrod pencil. So what this is going to look like is I'm going to come in and do a soft dusting of the goldenrod right into where we have our aura that's on the outside and you'll notice that I'm leaving little spaces where the light is coming through. So you can see I'm going to do a little bit in here and a little bit over here and already that's starting to change the feeling of the piece. So I'm just going to go around and add these little bits of gold into the piece and you could do this with your pen not a problem but I just wanted to show that this piece does really well just with color pencil and doing the gold with the color pencil so I'm just working my way around and the other reason why I liked doing this was because it was a nice draw or a nod to that uh, that pretty flower that we have in the center and you know me I love to carry my colors around a piece and so you can see that this is already starting to gain a lot of dimension just by adding in the goldenrod into this so I'm gonna start to just bring this around and I'm just gonna focus on this particular um, corner because we're going to do that in all of the other corners. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on this here a little bit more so that you can see and I'm going to press a little bit harder creating a little bit of a shadow wherever we would have an overlap or an underlap and you can see here's where we would have an overlap and here's where we would have an overlap. So I'm just bringing in a little bit of that heavier shading right in there and you can see over here I would also have a little bit of a shadow so I'm pressing a little bit harder. You could even take a little bit of graphite if you wanted to and add graphite into those areas just to make it a little bit more interesting. So that when I zoom out, look at how 
much more interesting this is than having the flat white. For me, I just find it more appealing, but you may really enjoy having the white. There is no right or wrong with this. And you could even go in with graphite on these if you wanted to just do graphite in the, um, in the white and have some fun and make it look like silver, which would also be really pretty. So you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. And then when we come back, we're going to do final touches. And so finally, you're going to see me pick up my Jelly Roll pen. This is the Jelly Roll White. And I always just get it started on my finger just so that I'm ready to go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on this here and just add a nice little highlight into the tail of my Dragonfly with a couple of dots and maybe add a little bit of a dot here and there just to give it a little bit of a shimmer. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of dots down at the bottom as well. I just love the way that these white highlighter pens give such a juiciness to a piece and just make them so interesting. So I'm just adding a couple of little dots. You could even put a little dot in the head as well and that's really pretty too. So go ahead, play with that highlighter pen, and then when we come back, we're going to go ahead and put in our chop and talk about a few things. So here we are. I wanted to talk a little bit about this here for a second. Let's just say you weren't into your gemstones that were on the outside edge and you wanted something a little bit more moody. You know, you could come in over, right over what you just did using one of my favorite tools, the IdentiPen, and you can just ink out the outside edges if you weren't too keen on your gemstones. I personally really love the gemstones on this one, but I wanted to show you something that was a little bit more moody too to play with it, okay? So you always have that opportunity just by using the IdentiPen, which will go over any color pencil. It's a really fabulous pen and I highly recommend recommend it to all of my students. I also wanted to bring back in my original piece, which was this piece right here. There were things I really liked about this piece, but I really wanted to build on it and do more things with it. And so that's kind of how we got here to these two pieces that I have in front of me. So you can see that I love to play and, and, and enjoy different parts of the composition. So I'm going to go ahead and hide my chop, and I'm going to hide my chop right there in the corner there. And this is just my way of indicating that I've finished a piece. And this is the time where I take a moment to observe what I created and offer gratitude for that. This is your time. This is your time to take care of yourself and to let the outside world go. And so offering gratitude for that, I think, is something that's really important. So if you enjoyed the class, please tell a friend and leave us a nice review or hit the subscribe button. That always helps people to find us on YouTube. And I'd also love to see your work over on our Facebook page. We have a great page called the Tangled Yogi Art Community page, and my students share their work there, and it's really a wonderful community. I'd love to see your creations there. Before we go, I just wanted to show you the black and white version of this class. Here it is. Just thought you might like to see yet another version of this really fun class. So I hope you'll play with it and have fun with it. And I look forward to seeing all of your creations. I look forward to tangling with you soon. Bye for now.